second one springs out of the first, right? When you play two eighth notes. Uh -huh. well, if you do it legato, you do it that way, and also staccato. You got ya, ba, ba, ya, ba, ba, that idea. I would make that little second of the two spikes a little less. The second of the two spike well. thirds, make it a little bit less. Mm -hmm. As if you were just hearing, watch, look. Those are the principal notes that we're hearing. We're hearing yum, ba, yum, ba. That's the thread. So now when you fill it in, you don't want to come hammering down on that second eighth, right? Does that mean the left hand is also? Same thing. And then it's yum, ba, that's, that's the shape. That's the thread. Good. Now the second one is just springing out of the first of the spike notes. This, um, the second one needs to be slightly lighter as well, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whenever you see the pairs of repeated note eighths, the second one's going to be slightly less. It's springing out, however, out of the first one. Like if I clapped it, I do yup, ba, b, right? Yup, ba, ba, yup, ba, ba. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Your rhythmics, yeah. that's your rhythmics, right? The rhythmics of that of that figure. Mm-hmm. Now you have to make it come to life in your in your playing. Yum bum ba, yum bum ba. So because it's a counterpoint left hand, so in fact the left hand is need to be equally pretty much yeah, the same what, pattern. Yes, pretty much what you did. Yes, you have to try to do that. The tricky is bar. one one hand has the long note, whereas the other hand is springing into the the first note with a spike mark. Mm. But you have to do the best you can to to get that at least at least lift those two note. You know, lift the spike mark, and it should sound good. Whenever you see the pairs of spikes on the on the redundant notes, just lift them up. Mm. Um. Yum. So remember that first one is yup, 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 Make sure this spring, yup. Remember we used to do our our exercises when once in a day we did things like that. Uh -huh. It's the same idea because remember they're repeated thirds. So you want this spring rebound, spring forward rebound, second, third. to it. Mm. Now do me the left hand alone. Actually, like four two three one four two three one. Then you apply oh. the, the 
4-2 for the thirds, then goes 3-1 for the longer note. 4-2-3-1. Mine does this. 4-2-4-2-3-1. 4-2-4-2-3-1. I think you get more control of that than with 3-5. Oh, okay. You know why? Because you're switching the E finger from a 2 to a 3. Notice that? Mm -hmm. So that, that makes it, gives you more definition. So you have 4, 2, 4, 2, 3, 1. 4, 2, 4, 2, 3, 1. Yeah. Actually, musically, it sounds much better that way. Uh -huh. You can see why. Look when you do this, look what happens. Well, you were doing this, then you were doing that. Is that what you were doing? Is that what you were doing? Yeah, so it's going to be yeah. two, four, you and five, one, three. three, 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 one, and four, two, two, one. Uh huh. Ah, okay. So I prefer four, two, four, two, three, one. Four, two, four, two, three. Yeah, I think that sounds better. It's and music, also have more it's musically, control. It's musically better. Because sometimes fingering, all the time fingering, has an impact on phrasing. Always. Yeah, I think it sounds it seems more control with the... Well, it gives you a chance to change the finger to change the timbre of the longer note by shifting the finger. It reminds you by shifting the finger. Is it a 5 3 5 feet, 3 one 4 2 4 2 Oh, 3 one 4 2 4 2 Oh. Something different, three one. So mm. I think this is a good fingering. Yep. And this hand, you also switching to two four. Yep. Gives you that delay that you can change the finger there. Mm. That longer note. Mm -hmm. This is a tricky movement. It's not as easy as it looks.